So when you all came to campus, what was your impression of Asian American studies, students, culture, presence, like all of that? So I guess in the context of Virginia Tech, I was in an organization which was like Asian American Coalition, which was like a discussion-based, seminar-based club in which we talked heavily about like Asian American issues, such as just to breach the surface is like cultural appropriation and um, anti-blackness within our community. And the president of AAC, when a good friend of mine had reached out to me to discuss a possible Asian American historical and cultural timeline. And I was more interested in the cultural aspect. So when I when I first came here, I had taught at a previous institution that was um, in South, it was in South Carolina, like low country. So it was pretty much, you know, white, like dominant, and then like a larger percentage of African American students, and then Hispanic communities. So not a whole lot of like Asian American communities or Asian international students. And when I came here, they give you comp training, like to like teach in like Virginia Tech's comp program. Um, but what I was surprised by was the number of like Asian international students. And so like that was my first encounter. Um, and like kind of like t- getting to know them and talk to them, just like seeing what their experience was like. That was just, I kind of had that like on the ground a little bit. I have a little bit of a different background. I actually was a TESOL teacher and certifier for a few years in undergrad. And my undergrad was a very popular university to send people uh, for accent coaching uh, because, oh. the, yeah, problematic for a lot of reasons. Oh, this is a podcast. My face went. Yeah. <laughs> uh, problematic for a lot of reasons, but the accent from the part of the Midwest I come from is considered the standard American accent, standardized American. So they would send people from uh, South Korea and from Japan to come and study at the university so they could adapt that version of English. Uh, Yeah. And then I, on my own time, as a job, worked at a center that helped people study and pass TESOL certifications. So my familiarization with, like, international Asian students was very high, and yet we had almost zero interactions with uh, Asian American students Mm. because the middle of the country is strikingly white. And even moving out here. So this moving out here and working in these classes were some of my first interactions with uh, Asian American students and having that uh, having that uh, terrible uh, issue of not knowing until you talk to them whether or not they are from this country or not from this country and feeling terrible about not being able to know that uh, right off the bat and definitely experiencing some of those some of those issues that have been talked about and brought up over and over, especially in our Asian American rhetoric course. Why do you feel terrible about that? Uh, because I mean, you always you always feel like you should be able to do that, and it certainly doesn't happen with with other students, right? Uh, with with white students, I I feel like I'm never I'm never guessing whether or not they're international, and when they are international, they tell you pretty straightforward. But because the population balance is so I would say, in my experience, at least almost 50 50. 50% of the Asian students are international, 50% of the Asian students aren't. You mean here? Uh, here. It feels like the guesswork happens a little more frequently. Like, I wish I didn't have to guess at all, but it, it does happen. If there was a 50 50% uh, split among the white students and 50% of them were from international countries and 50% of them were from here, mm-hmm. I might have to play that guessing game as well. So and I think I would feel terrible in that case as well because I hate, I hate talking to somebody and either having them give me a blank stare because I'm talking too fast, especially that first semester when they first get get here, or talking to somebody and having them, which is the worst case scenario, this scenario, I usually try to avoid completely, say, I'm from Nova. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, sorry about that. I apologize. So this is interesting. You're talking about kind of like changing, changing context going from, was it Wyoming yeah. to here? Yeah. And having to kind of shift your... Well, your interactions changed a bit because the makeup was a little different. Yeah, and they just started existing. And that's true not just for the Asian student population, but just the intercultural and interracial communications altogether. Uh, Mm -hmm. Wyoming is like 95% white people. And Mm -hmm. so there's just not 
these conversations need to be happening, but a lot of these conversations just don't mm -hmm. happen because mm -hmm. the context for them don't arise. And so uh, coming to Virginia and being out in Virginia, you, you get immersed in all of these conversations and all these considerations that you just didn't have to, you had the privilege not to participate in. It's the same, I, I mean, I assume, not, though it's not the same at all, but the same kind of a uh, same kind of thing happens with weather, right? Like if you've just lived in Southern California all your life mm. or in like Southern Arizona and then you move to North Dakota, you get to learn what a snowsuit is and the importance of mm -hmm. a snowsuit is and you've just never had to put on a snowsuit or be experienced with that before. See, I feel like I had like a very different experience because I wasn't coming from like an R1 university. I came from more of like a teaching college mm -hmm. and uh, – <laughs> one of the the marketing strategies of that school was like come like we're by the beach <laughs> so there was sort of like a different it was a high like first gen community across the board like a lot of people coming to college for the first time and then also like a bunch of like people who had always um vacationed in the area who were like I'm gonna go to college there and that's gonna be what college looks like so I developed like my first experiences teaching was kind of trying to like in some ways, like, teach students how to be students um, mm -hmm. and kind of, like, reel them back in from, like, you're actually, like, 20 miles from the ocean, so it's not <laughs> as close as you think. Um, so here, like, I found that I kind of needed to both, like, speed up um, in terms of, like, what we're doing in the classroom mm -hmm. because most of these, most of the students I came in contact with, they were pretty equipped to be students. Mm -hmm. um, and then figuring out, like, how to, how to do that while also for the Asian international students I dealt with, kind of figuring out, like, because they're really competent students. Like, they right. are, <laughs> they're better students than me. Um, and they, they've, like, always, like, worked really hard. And kind of figuring out how to shift what they think an English class should be like, because they were, like, fully ready to be, to, like, do like, all this hard work um, and to, like, not ask for help. So my challenge there was, like, figuring out how to, both like shift their assumptions and also like give them like the tools that they were wanting. For me, the context changed quite a lot in a way that I don't know if it might be similar to what John was talking about. I'm um, going from East Lansing, Michigan to here um, in part because there was a huge mm -hmm. international student population there. Um, I see a lot more Asian Americans here, at least in terms of students, especially coming from Nova. And so I feel like there are different kinds of expectations from even um, locals or other students, I felt like there was, I don't know if it's just me, but I felt like there was more animosity toward Asian people in Michigan. I think in part because of, you know, the issues with the auto industry and kind of like blaming uh -huh. mm -hmm. Asians for taking jobs or whatever. And I feel like that kind of history doesn't exist here. And so I have not felt that kind of like well, I mean, I've never experienced like, you know, racial slurs being yelled at me here um, in the way that I did a couple of times in Michigan. Um, but at the same time, on like the institutional level, it, it was kind of surprising to me that even though there are a lot of Asians on campus, including Asian Americans, that it's not reflected within the university, um, in the buildings, in the kind of curriculum.